Hello everyone, this is Michael and I'm the lead developer for the ShapeDiver Viewer. This is the fourth video of the tutorial series for the ShapeDiver Viewer API. I'll link the playlist with all videos of the tutorial series here if you missed them. We have already discussed the basic setup, parameters and exports. And now it is time to look at outputs. I will show you today how you can access outputs and manipulate them. As the data of outputs can change with customizations of the session, I will also explain you how the process works and what you can do to always have the latest information available. Let's start right off with some code examples and have a look. Okay, so this is the model that we are going to use today. Nothing changed here from the last videos. And this is the setup. On the left side you can see the parameter menu and on the right side the export menu that it created in the last videos. So first of all, how can you access the outputs? There is the outputs property, which is a dictionary with the keys being the IDs of the outputs. But you might not know the ID, so there are utility functions so that you can get the outputs. There's get output by name, get output by ID and get output by format. You will definitely know the name because this is specified on the grasshopper side. And with the name you can access the output. So as you can see this can be easily done and we now lock the output to the console to see what's in there. Okay, once we open this object we can see the bounding box, which is the bounding box in the object space. We can see in the content where there's the link now to our GLTF, so we are going to look at that. Once we paste that link in and download it, we can download our GLTF here. So you can see that on the bottom here. And now we can put that into our GLTF loader and see that this is a normal GLTF2 that we can load. There are also other properties here. I'll just now click through all of them so that you can see what is there. They don't always have to be defined. Some of them might be useful for you in the future, like this node property, but we will get to that. Okay, so for the next thing, I want to make the output invisible. So this can be done by setting the node visible property to false. And we can see the shelf is gone, it's invisible now. But once we update a parameter of the shelf, it becomes visible again. This is because the node changed. So what we can do is call this update callback function and supply a callback so that we always get the new node once it has been updated. So we can set the visible property there to false as well. And now let's see, it's invisible in the beginning and once we change a parameter it stays invisible. So this update callback function is very useful for these cases where you always get the latest data of an output. So we now do this for the image plane output, where this output is just called image plane. And in this case, we just want to have a look at what kind of data we have there. And in this case, we're just going to log the content of the output to the console to see what's in there. In the beginning, there's nothing because this out update callback function is only executed once there has been an update to the scene. And now we can see here in this content there are no two array items because this output is structured a bit differently. I linked all of this in the description. But for the bitmap texture, we can get our image. Now, for the next part, I want to change the material of this output. So this can also be done with the update callback. In this case, I now create a new material data item. So there are different materials that you can use. All of that is linked in the description. In this case, we're just going to use the standard material with a green color so that we want to apply this green color to our shelf, so that the shelf is just green without anything else. Now we traverse this node to get to all the geometry and then apply this new material to all of the geometry there. 
so this is relatively easy to do. And now we just have to update the version of our node so that the viewer knows, hey, something new happened. Now we set the update callback, we shall specify to our update callback property on the output and call it once in the beginning so that this, these changes are applied immediately. And we can see our shelf is now green and it stays green after parameter update. So that's already it for today. That was our video on outputs. I showed you how you can access outputs, manipulate them and how the management of outputs works in regards to session customizations. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy coding and see you next time.